Let's dive into this animal cell and see how mitosis works. We pass through the plasma membrane, revealing the nuclear envelope with its pores. There are two centrosomes to the right of the nucleus and a nucleolus within it. During prophase, the chromatin is condensing. Each chromosome consists of two chromatids. The nucleolus breaks down and the centrosomes move apart, building the spindle and asters as they go. The disappearance of the nuclear membrane marks the beginning of prometaphase. During prometaphase, the spindle invades the nuclear region. Spindle fibers are forming and breaking down. When kinetic cores capture spindle fibers, they stabilize them by giving them something to pull against. The captured chromosomes are pulled to the equatorial plane and the cell is in metaphase. As we move our camera, you can see the metaphase arrangement on the equatorial plane. The centromeres divide, allowing anaphase to begin. Two processes are going on. The spindle fibers shorten and the poles move apart. Both processes move the chromosomes toward their destinations. We back away to observe the events of telophase. The spindle breaks down and the chromosomes elongate as the chromatin uncoils. Nuclear envelopes form and then nucleoli. A contractile ring causes cytokinesis, leaving two daughter cells, each genetically identical to the parent cell. Let's begin in the nucleus, where genetic information is stored in chromosomes. Most of a person's cells are diploid, with two sets of chromosomes. One set is from their mother, shown here in red, and the other set is from their father, shown in blue. Each maternal chromosome has a corresponding paternal chromosome. These matched pairs are called homologous chromosomes. During interphase, chromosomes are duplicated. Each chromosome now consists of two identical copies called sister chromatids. Zooming in, we see that each sister chromatid is made up of DNA wound around histone proteins. Each strand coils up into a tight helical fiber. As meiosis begins, a spindle forms and duplicated centrosomes start to migrate toward opposite poles of the cell. Back in the nucleus, 
the chromosomes are condensing. In meiosis, homologous chromosomes stick together in pairs. The close association of homologous chromosomes allows segments of non-sister chromatids to trade places. This recombination of maternal and paternal genetic material is a key feature of meiosis. After the spindle forms and the nuclear envelope breaks down, microtubules from opposite poles attach to each chromosome of the homologous pair, resulting in a tug of war. At metaphase one, the chromosome pairs are positioned in the middle of the cell. The next stage begins when homologous chromosomes separate from each other and move toward opposite poles. Each chromosome still consists of two sister chromatids. This cell began meiosis with 46 chromosomes, but each daughter cell now has only 23 chromosomes. In meiosis II, microtubules from opposite poles attach to the chromosomes, which then move to the center of the cell. Next, the sister chromatids separate, becoming full-fledged chromosomes that move to opposite poles. Nuclear envelopes reform, and each daughter cell divides into two cells. We started with a single diploid cell. And now that meiosis is complete, we have four haploid cells, cells with a single set of chromosomes. These haploid cells mature into gametes.